Hello everyone, my name is Veos, and welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video. In my latest video, I was reading some of the comments, and someone told me, pro tip, that it was, that it was better for an SSTO to get up to orbital speeds in the thinner part of the atmosphere rather than starting off sea level. Now, I don't know if any of you remember this. Those of, those of you that do remember this, well, damn, you've been with me for a long time. But in the early days of SSTOing, let's see if a word, I used to have a type of uh, launch profile for SSTOs where I would cut through the thicker atmosphere and right around 13, 14,000 meters, I would level out and just speed up in the thin atmosphere. It was my understanding that back then that that actually wasn't very efficient, that it was more efficient to actually start at sea level, get up to speed, and then finally get into orbit. By using sea level tactics, you could use less engines because because you had more time to get up to speed before getting into orbit, therefore you get into a suborbit with less weight. Does that make sense? Now, remember this is very many, 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 many versions ago, so things could have changed, I don't know. But as I always say, test it. It's funny because in uh, in my latest video, I got another passionate, passionate review where I was burned again at the stake for not doing things the right way. All I could reply to the comment was, I like cake. But it made me wonder, was it more efficient? Was cutting through the thicker atmosphere first and then leveling out at the thinner atmosphere more efficient than just traveling along the sea level? The sea level ish approach. A potch. A potch. So let's have some fun and do some testing. So we already know that this can get uh, about 1100 meters per second delta V uh, when we get to orbit. So what I'm going to test out first is maybe 15,000 meters high before we level out and try to get some speed. That, that could work, I think. Maybe. Let's give it a shot. See what happens. Alright, so here we are in orbit at 12 over 1200 meters per second. At first glance, it seems like that getting up to orbital speeds or suborbital speeds in the thinner atmosphere, rather than using the sea level approach, it seems like it's it's better, right? However, I am concerned that this might not be due to the fact that we have more fuel when we get up there, but rather that the fact that we weigh weigh a lot less because we burnt more fuel trying to just get up there. If you noticed, I started at 10,000 meters high because of the simple fact that it was taking way too long to get up there. Oh, Vey, let's just put more engines on here. The, 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 wait, 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 wait. We're trying to be efficient. Efficiency means that you can use less to get more. So if I've got to put more rapiers on here, how is that more efficient? That just means that you're going to have more weight push around once you get in space. So right now, total mass is 62 tons altogether. So I'm going to go ahead and do another mass. Mass? What? what? Do another test see how much how much we weigh when we get into space using the sea level approach Okay, so obviously we do not have that much delta V as we did the other way, but how much do we weigh? 64 tons. Hmm, so we're two tons heavier, but minus a little less than 200 meters per second delta V left over. Okay, so what I'm going to attempt to do is a type of hybrid. Because this craft doesn't have that much thrust behind it right off the bat, it needs to get up to speed before it really can do anything, which in it, it's, I believe that that would be its advantage because then it has less weight weight to push around once it get up once it gets up there which means it has more delta v but instead of going real low for a period of time before ascending i'm going to try to pitch the nose up a little bit while gaining more speed but also more altitude more quickly up to about 10,000 meters or past this really thick part of the atmosphere right there then i'll use the pro grade to level out a little bit before going back to stability assist allowing allowing us to accelerate in the thinner atmosphere and hopefully we don't explode let's see what that does Okay, that was an interesting test. I may have stayed in the thinner atmosphere for a little too long. We're at 63 tons, so let me try that again. Oh, 
Huh, did you look at that? Total mass of 64, almost 65 tons, but we just shy of 1200 meters per second delta V. That run right there tells me that that was pretty efficient. We were able to get the same amount of tonnage up there without burning a whole lot of liquid fuel. Now that is very interesting. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually test it with a much, much smaller, lighter SSTO and see if we can get something better than the 25 or 250 or 300 meters per second we usually get once we get up there using this new flight path hybrid technique. Okay, so apparently little SSTOs don't like that. I'm gonna try to be a little more gentler this time. We'll pitch up to 20 degrees. does not like that at all. I'm gonna have to do this manually. I thought if I hit caps lock, I get more precise movements. Maybe that would work. That would be a no. No. That would be an N-O. Hmm. Maybe I did something wrong. Let's try again. Okay, 250 meters per second left over is not that bad. Let me see something. Okay. okay. meters per second this time you know i i can't really tell and i don't have a whole lot of time to to do a whole bunch of tests but it would appear that for smaller more nimble and lighter craft going up to a thin atmosphere and then doing your sorb sorb, sorb. sub suborbital acceleration isn't as effective as just starting right off at sea level now granted if i had more time i would do more different types of launch profiles to see what was the best so we did get and I want to say we did get better numbers with larger crafts by accelerating at a thinner atmosphere or slightly better numbers I should say not a really big change so it could be that that type of method we accelerate in thinner atmosphere is better for larger SSTOs or maybe mid large range whereas maybe heavier SSTOs that carry a lot of cargo might have to go for the sea level acceleration approach because they're just too heavy to get up there fast enough how to imagine that a heavier uh, a heavier SSTO would waste some fuel trying to get up to the thinner atmosphere before finally getting up there and then accelerating. I mean, let's try it with this. This, this you typically get about 300 plus delta V left over if you take the sea level route. So let's get up to the thinner atmosphere and try that. <sighs> Let's try that again. That, that that was rough. This thing is this thing is heavy. Oh, trying to get this thing to climb. My goodness. You have to remember it was designed for efficiency, so it's not like it has a whole lot of thrust behind it right off the bat. What the? I think KSP is gonna crash soon. And I I can feel it. than nearly falling asleep trying to get the thing up there because it took so long. I don't think a heavy craft like this has the TWR necessary to get up there straight shot and then level out and then use a thin atmosphere to try to speed up. So instead what I'm going to do is another hybrid. I'm going to build up speed at sea level and ascend and as I'm ascending when I get up to about 10,000 meters high or past the really 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 thick atmosphere I'm going to ever so slightly tilt the nose down and try to remain in the thin atmosphere for a little longer to build up more speed. Let's try that.
Woof. How in the hell did we get up there with only 196 meters per second left? So I'm thinking that it's not so much as using the atmosphere to get up to speed. I mean, yes, that that is what, what you need to do for an SSTO. But I'm also thinking that getting out of the atmosphere completely as soon as possible is also a really big thing you need for an SSTO. So when you start at sea level and just let it ascend by itself after it gets to a certain, a certain speed, that natural arc going straight into space while gaining a whole lot of speed in the atmosphere allows you to not only use the atmosphere to get up to 14, 1500, even 1600 meters per second before you completely run out of air and have to kick over into the rocket stage. But the point is you only spend the minimum amount of time you need in the atmosphere. You try to keep, try to keep being in the atmosphere as quickly and efficiently as possible and as little as possible. So you want to minimize your time in the atmosphere while maximizing as much thrust as you can get out of it while you're in there. The point of an SSTO is to try to get into space as quickly as possible while maximizing how much speed you can get out of the atmosphere. It doesn't really pay to stay in the atmosphere in order to build up a tremendous amount of speed only to lose all that speed when you get to the point where your engines start to slow down because they're running out of atmosphere before finally kicking over into the rocket stage. I try to do the hybrid approach but as we can see that really hurt my delta v because i stayed longer in the atmosphere even though i was building up more speed i was staying longer in the atmosphere so that by the time my engine started to slow down and die my tv my tb what <laughs> my twr started dropping yes i was going fast but i was going fast horizontally more than vertically so i wasn't leaving the atmosphere as fast as i needed to now i'm not saying that this technique wouldn't work on some SSTOs. It seemed like we were getting better numbers with the dragless one when it came to how much delta V we had left. But I don't think it's a I don't think it's the best ascension profile, if that's how you want to say it, when it comes to really heavy SSTOs or even very, very light, fast SSTOs. Huh. Oh, that's a big difference. That there be a big difference right there. Okay, well, I'm all out of time, but from what I can see, flying up to a thin atmosphere and then using that thin atmosphere to accelerate into space might not work for every SSTO. Perhaps a medium-sized one or something? Nothing too heavy? Because something this heavy would actually suffer from something, uh, from that kind of flight profile. In my opinion, it would take too long to get up there. And by the time I got up there, it'd still only be going maybe a couple hundred meters per second. And then good luck trying to accelerate this big boy. <clears throat> because as you leveled out trying to accelerate, you'd start falling. I mean, eventually you would start to accelerate and then climb back up. But you're already burning through so much fuel just getting up there. To me, it'd be a lot more efficient to start off building up your speed at sea level. And then once you get up to about five, 600 meters per second for a really big craft. And then allowing it to naturally ascend it makes more sense whereas a smaller SSTO could easily get to that height and then start burning in a thinner atmosphere sure but for some reason I was getting better numbers launching and flying at sea level than I was climbing to a certain altitude and then leveling out and I'm really thinking it's because even though yes I'm accelerating at sea level and I'm spending a lot of time in the thick atmosphere by the time I reach that certain speed and start ascending I go through all three layers of the atmosphere pretty quickly it's like I'm gone you know Oh, all three all three levels of the atmosphere is like pop, 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 done 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 and before I know it I'm in a vacuum in space and we're burning our rockets whereas the other way you spend more time in the atmosphere but like I said we did tend to get better numbers with a medium sized craft not a heavy medium like the cargo SSTO but something medium sized we seem to have gotten better numbers generally speaking so I'm thinking that while this type of launch profile is good for some crafts it's not good for all all of them. But anyway, that's the amount of time I have right now to do these tests. But let me know what you think in the comments below. Am I doing something horribly wrong? Am I horribly wrong? Am, Am I, I twisted? twisted? But thank you all for coming and thank you so much for being a part of this channel. If you like what you saw, please leave a like. And if you really, really, really like what you saw, consider subscribing. I upload videos regularly. Regularly. And if I don't, I usually let everybody know in the community tab underneath my channel. But anyways, love you all. Stay safe. 
safe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Bye-bye.